Training module 19.1, solid drills. I'm your trainer, Edwin Tunney, training and technical specialist for Horn USA, Inc. During the course of this training, we'll talk about an overview of Horn solid drill program, the value added features, some success in the market, and how to apply. There are four main series of drills that Horn offers. You've, the first is the DDP drill, so mainly for steel and secondarily for iron, offered in three and five and eight times diameter with and without internal coolant. And that drill is also offered in a single and double margin variant. The next would be the DDM. So the DDM is mainly for stainless. Uh, but it can also be used in steels, iron, non-ferrous like aluminum, copper and brass, or heat resistant alloys like titanium and nickel alloys. It's offered in three, five, eight, and 12 times diameter with internal coolant, single margin. The third drill type is the DDK. Uh, so the DDK's main application is iron, it's available three and five times diameter with internal coolant, and that's a double margin drill. And last, the DDN. So the DDN is for non-ferrous materials, five and eight times diameter, and it's also a double margin drill. Before we get too far along, let's talk about the nomenclature. So the part nomenclature is fairly easy to follow. Uh, you have the DDP, the DDM, the DDK, or the N in the front. The next is the length to diameter ratio. So you can have three, five, eight, 12, uh, whatever that length to diameter ratio is. Coolant or non-through coolant drills. So a double zero is a non-through coolant and a zero one is a through coolant. And then last is the diameter. So that diameter is given in millimeters. Inch product is also uh, shown in millimeters. So if you have an inch drill, it's a uh, 635 would be the drill or 6.35 millimeter. Getting a little further into the details uh, with each drill system, the DDP uh, drill is a single margin uh, tool and also has a double margin variant. Both are in grade uh, BP35, point angle of 140 degrees. It's a cone relief point and a 30 degree helix. One big difference that you'll find uh, with the drill, uh, drill lines uh, from Horn is the tolerancing. So the diameter is uh, tighter tolerance at M7 uh, rather than H8 tolerance. The DDM drill, is a single margin a drill, 140 degree point. It has a different type of point, which is a four facet, 30 degree helix. And all drills are available with cylindrical and whistle knot shanks. To round out the different drill lines, you have the DDK, uh, and that's a double margin drill, specifically for iron, and secondarily can be used in steels. The point type is a four facet point. Then the DDN is grade MG35, which is an uncoated and polished uh, flute, 140 degree, four facet type point, 30 degree helix. Also in M7 tolerances, uh, three times, five times diameter for the DDK and five and eight times for the DDN. The big difference uh, in the horn drilling system versus competitors uh, is the tolerancing. So the horn drill uh, diameter tolerance is an M7 versus an H8 uh, that you can find in the market. The M7 versus H8 is about a 50 to 75% decrease in the tolerance range. So that gives you a, a, a tighter dimension to zero and thus uh, a longer tool life um, when compared to drills that could be on the low side if you, have, uh, if you have a bigger tolerance band. 
So compare, uh, just compare same diameter. So six to a 10 uh, millimeter uh, diameter with upper tolerance of eight tenths and a lower tolerance of plus two tenths. The H8 has a plus zero tolerance down to minus nine tenths tolerance. So in addition to the precision, you can also see the difference here is that you have a, with the M7, you have a plus plus tolerance rather than a plus nothing minus tolerance. We also have made to order items uh, for the DD uh, type drills. Uh, in general, the minimum shank diameter is 2.5 millimeter or 98 thousandths. The max is 32. Uh, the shank type offered on, on made to orders are generally uh, cylindrical. The max overall length is 14.961 inches or 380 millimeter. And the max length to diameter ratio is 30 times diameter. On single margin, and double margin internal coolant drills, the minimum drill diameter is one millimeter. On the max diameter is still 32 millimeter. Without internal coolant, uh, the minimum drill is kind of asterisk here. It's one millimeter, but it can be uh, discussed uh, with tech or engineering to uh, determine if we can create that drill for you, given that it, uh, it's less than one millimeter diameter. The geometries and forms, uh, in addition to variations in, in diameter, you can also get different forms, different points uh, for special or difficult alloys. And just to note uh, that 95 millimeter diameter with uh, 32 millimeter shanks are also available for quote. A few examples of made to orders, uh, tap drills, step drills. So uh, a large diameter difference is possible. Uh, so you can see this is gonna do a lot of different chamfers and features uh, in a drilled hole. Also solid carbide step drill with chamfering. So if you wanna drill through a thin plate, and then chamfer both sides, uh, that's possible with this kind of tool. The value added features uh, for the DD system, it's available in single or double margin. So if you need guidance on the drill, you can get a double margin uh, variant on the DDP system. You have advanced grades and uh, superior diameter and consistency really of the diameter is excellent. High quality and ground uh, polished finishes. So the, the margins of the drill and then on the inside, uh, the inside flute uh, on, especially on the DDN are highly polished. So you get very, very smooth evacuation of chips uh, from the hole. And then you get longer tool life because you have a better grind on the margin. The DDM drills, uh, you have the advanced four facet point. So that's excellent for centering and difficult alloys where uh, sometimes it's hard for the drill to find the center and stabilize. You have advanced um, grades to resist a built up edge. You have, uh, again, superior run out and diameter consistency and high quality finishes. Uh, very easy to recondition uh, the four facet point as well for high value of the tool. A few market success stories uh, with the DDP and uh, DD system. This is drilling on a Tornos multi spindle in titanium 6L4V. So the competitor tool was 121 surface feet, uh, 3925 uh, RPM. And the feed was 1,000 3 inch per rev. The horn tool was a DDM drill, three times diameter, through coolant, three millimeter diameter. In BM35, same cutting conditions, 
So the outcome was uh, that the competitor tool was 7776. The horn tool was 5480. The parts per edge were 300 uh, for the competitor tool and 1400 for the horn tool. So it ended up a cost per piece for the competition was 26 cents. The cost per piece for the horn tool was four cents. This resulted in a annual cost savings of $45,000. 544 fewer drills and 45 hours of tool change. So significant increase in performance. The next example is on 11144 stress proof. The problem in this application was tool life, um, 343 SFM, 5042 RPM, 9 thou, 8 tenths inch per rev. We brought in a DDP, three times diameter with thr through coolant, 6.6 uh, .6 millimeter diameter. Same cutting conditions. The result was the competitor tool was 7170. The horn tool was 6660. Holes per edge for the competitor, 250. Holes per edge with the horn tool, 1250. Manufacturing cost per piece uh, was 35 cents for the competitor and 10 cents with the horn tool. So we got five times the tool, look, tool life of the competition and a 71% reduction in manufacturing costs per hole. The next example is in 304 stainless and the problem again, tool life. So the competitor tool was using 231 SFM, 2800 RPM, 5,000 inch per ref feed. The horn tool, was a DDM, three times diameter through coolant with eight millimeter diameter. The same cutting conditions, 231 SFM, 2800 RPM, and 5,000 inch per rev. Competitor was 8726. The horn tool was 6660. Holes per edge on the horn, on the competitor tool, 1500. Holes per edge, 5,600. Manufacturing cost per piece, 14 cents versus the horn cost of 10 cents. So 4.7 times the tool life, 28% reduction in manufacturing cost per hole for a savings of $7,332 per year, just on, on one drill. All right, so now that we've overviewed the horn systems um, and kind of how they fit in uh, to the market, let's talk about uh, some specifics on applying the tool. So the first thing uh, to know about drilling is to pay attention to what kind of hole you're uh, drilling into. So through holes, blind holes, those are fairly straightforward and easy, uh, but in most cases, um, in some cases, you find uh, yourself drilling in interruptions, inclined entry, convex entry, concave entry, and irregular surfaces. So the guidance here is uh, basically, if you are entering into one of these odd surfaces, so interrupted, inclined, uh, irregular, concave, or convex, reduce your, your entry feed, uh, usually by 50% of the, the normal drilling parameter. And then on an incline, if it's really above five degrees incline, you still wanna use that uh, reduced entry. If damage occurs, if you see heavy damage appearing on the margins after a relatively short period of time, you may wanna consider uh, using an entry flat, uh, using an end mill and using an entry flat before drilling the hole. As horn uh, produces uh, tooling for a lot of uh, small, small round parts, it's kind of important to understand uh, where your limits are with drilling before you put an entry flat in. So if you're two times the diameter of the drill, 
you most certainly need some kind of entry flat to get the best performance out of the drill. Three, three times diameter. So the, the diameter of the part should be three times the diameter of the drill. You can, you can do it, but use caution. Four times diameter or greater, then you don't have to worry too much. You have enough of a, a flat surface for the drill to enter and not cause damage to the point or the margins. In any case, when you're drilling into round material, reduce your standard normal feed rate by 50% until that tool is fully engaged. I won't get too far into the weeds on specific cutting conditions. Um, I think basically speed is gonna be what you would normally see for a solid carbide high performance drill uh, feeds much the same. Uh, what I want to point out on this is just to pay attention to both speed and feed when it comes to inclined surfaces, convex, uh, irregular surface, and then uh, multiply your feed by, for instance, interrupted, use 0.5, inclined 0.5, convex 0.5, if it's concave, be extra careful, multiply your feed by 0.75. And if it's a regular surface, it's not that big of a deal, uh, but you can multiply by 0.25 to make a feed correction uh, when you're entering in the material. Now, once you're past the margins and you're in, your drill is fully uh, seated, then you can uh, increase your feed uh, to a normal parameter. On longer drills, when you have eight and 20 times diameter, also don't forget uh, to reduce your cutting speed. Uh, it's kind of diminishing returns with cutting speed when you have really long tools because you tend to uh, wear out the margins faster because uh, the tool, when the pressure is released from drilling, it's going to uh, damage those margins a little more aggressively when you're dealing in those longer length to diameter ratios. Much the same with steels, uh, with the DDM, stainless steel. Uh, I will say uh, stainless steel can be uh, very difficult to drill, especially austenetics tends to, tends to be very sticky. Uh, so you wanna pay close attention to your cutting speed. Make sure you have enough speed to actually start to soften the material as you're cutting and make sure you don't get a built up edge and then pay attention to your, your feeds as well. All right, for titanium alloys, uh, be very careful about cutting conditions. Move them up incrementally uh, much, much less aggressively than you would with a steel or, or even a stainless. Uh, you can see the top end feeds here even for a large diameter uh, drill for a DDM drill is eight thousandths. So uh, don't go from two thousandths to six thousandths. You can have a, a very bad result with difficult alloys. Um, titaniums and nickel alloys tend to clamp back on the drill. So uh, expect that. Don't re-enter the material. So uh, drill your hole. Don't use pecking cycle. Um, just be careful that you know that it's going to clamp back down on the drill, on the drill margins. Iron, uh, be sure uh, with iron is just paying attention to the cutting speed. Uh, the material itself gen generally is not that hard, but it's very uh, abrasive and can wear the margin of your drill out very quickly. The the DDK drills don't specifically have uh, parameters uh, for uh, ductile iron. So you see gray cast iron and spheroidal graphite cast iron, uh, but there's no parameters for ductile. Doesn't mean you can't do it, but I would maybe err with the side of the DDP drill for ductile iron uh, rather than, um, rather than uh, using the DDK drill. Non-ferrous is easy uh, with the DDN, um, fairly straightforward cutting speed and uh, feed rate, uh, fairly aggressive feed rate with these. Uh, 
main thing you want to pay attention to uh, with feed rates on aluminum drills is you know that the the feed rate uh, can be aggressive, but the the limitation really isn't uh, the strength of the edge of the tool. It's more or less the volume of chip inside the flute. So if you're if you're going uh, deep inside of a part, you want to make sure that your tips can evacuate because it can turn ugly very quickly. Uh, if you pack chips, you can snap the drill off. So use these aggressive parameters. Uh, your cutting edge isn't going to break down if you use them, but pay attention to your coolant uh, and flushing those chips out of the hole. If you look uh, at an example of that, this is a, a prime example uh, with uh, aluminums or stickier materials, really any material, the further you get down into the hole, the more difficult it becomes to evacuate uh, the chip. Uh, a lot of times, even through coolant, um, you have to push the chip all the way out of the helix. So the uh, very, very difficult sometimes uh, to make that happen. The core of the drill, um, it's a balance. Uh, so the core of the drill being bigger makes your flute smaller. So you have less room for chips. So yes, you might have a more robust point, uh, but you can also uh, break the drill just as easily by packing chips. I like this slide um, as far as being a very good guidance on what to look for if you're new to using high perform performance drills. So this is a, this is a steel material, uh, 11144 stress proof, uh, but it's typical of the shape that you would wanna see for a, tr a chip in high performance drilling. So the entry chip is always gonna sort of look like this as it's entering the, the point and it's spiraling out. Um, if you get a chip that looks like this, you need a little bit more feed. When you have chips that have uh, tiny uh, tails on them, uh, that starts to be acceptable, uh, but ideally the optimal, you want uh, an open chip without these little tails. Uh, still acceptable if you're getting a little bit of compression of the chip. When you start to see the chip looks really tight, uh, that's when you need to back the feed down uh, because the, uh, the more you compress these, the more force and, and temperature you put in the process, the more likely are, you are to uh, break the tool. Exit chips always look like this. They're kind of open. And basically, if you put all these together, they would make a, a disc uh, where it's pushed out at the end of a through hole. Pay attention uh, to your runout. Uh, runout is uh, one of the contributing key factors in getting good performance out of a drill. Uh, so you can have a bell mouth condition happen very easily if your runout is bad or if your part is not stable. Uh, anything that causes the center of the tool to vary from the axis of rotation, the theoretical perfect axis here. Um, be careful of that. Um, you tend to have more problems with uh, nickel alloys, uh, stainless steels, and titaniums uh, for that bell mouth condition, but always be looking, you know, check your, uh, inspect your hole with several different sizes of pin or however you're checking it. Uh, to make sure that you have a consistent diameter all the way through. In any case, uh, just like with other, um, other challenges in drilling, just reduce the feed rate by 50% and you'll see a, a very a marked performance increase uh, and decrease of that bell mouth condition. Exit burrs, uh, minimize exit burrs by slowing down 50 to 75% during the exit. So um, they're basically just a cause of you're putting too much pressure on this little disc that's at the bottom, uh, the imaginary disc here at the bottom of the, the hole. And uh, if you don't give the drill enough time uh, to sort of cut rather than push, 
then you can have heavier uh, burr formation at the bottom. Run out, um, pay attention to run out. Try to hold that within about 20 micron or eight tenths. Uh, you can use a, a Farion, a high performance collet system. That's going to have a, a run out of three micron um, further out from, from the collet. Make sure you have enough gripping force. Uh, so use a, a quality system that's going to uh, grip the tool properly. Drilling tends to, uh, unless you have very large diameter drills, uh, really any holder with good run out will, will work. We recommend using something uh, like the Farion uh, that has good run out and gripping uh, force, uh, but you can use hydraulic, uh, you can use other, other systems. All right, pay attention to your coolant. Uh, make sure if you have to use uh, internal coolant is usually best uh, with drilling. If you're using external coolant though, pay attention to your coolant line uh, where uh, it's directed. You want really want one, at least one on the point during entry and you want one flushing down um, the helix. On internal coolant, uh, pay a special attention to um, you know, if, if you have very high pressure and you don't have enough volume coming out of your coolant uh, pump, your, your system, then you have this kind of vapor. You don't have laminar coolant flow. You have coolant vapor, uh, which isn't as effective as re at removing chips, and it's not a, as effective uh, to cool the, the drill. So pay attention to that. If you have a, a bunch of vapor happening inside the machine cabinet when you're doing this uh, and you have the ability to reduce your pressure a little bit, it might be a good, a good idea. Speaking of uh, you know, volume, the demand of the tool on the volume of coolant, you can see that uh, most coolant pumps uh, can handle this. Uh, but dependent on, on the pressure. So a 10 bar pressure, 145 PSI um, needs about, on a 20 millimeter drill, needs about four gallons per minute. If you go to a higher pressure, like a 30 bar pressure, it's gonna need 7.9 gallons per minute. So big difference when you start to increase in pressure uh, you need that volume to, to back it up. Don't forget uh, about small tools as well. If you have a small drill, you can actually break it with too much pressure. So um, if you have a three millimeter drill and your coolant pressure is above 45 bar, 653 PSI, you can actually snap the tool. Uh, so you can see the chart here kind of shows you uh, a good standard. So three millimeter is about 20 bar. Uh, on up to 20 is about 60 bar. Is a, is a good uh, pressure to have uh, coming out of the pump. If you're above 10 millimeter, uh, then you really start to develop a, a larger chip that requires really a minimum of 145 PSI uh, for good evacuation. Doesn't mean it can't do it, but for good evacuation, you want 145 PSI. Also, uh, don't forget um, the horn tools uh, are an M7 uh, tolerance. Uh, so they make um, an excellent pilot drill because they're plus plus tolerance. So you go in uh, with that uh, pilot drill uh, at 140 degree point, and then uh, you want the deep hole drill to be a plus nothing minus tolerance. Uh, so you can use an H8 tolerance, but make sure that your, your deep hole drill has 135 degree point uh, and always needs to be less than the pilot drill. Uh, select, uh, select that pilot drill based on the nominal size with an M M7 uh, tolerance. 
no center drill. So um, on any of the, the DD system, you don't need a center drill. They're, they're designed to uh, self-center. And if, if you use a center drill, you can actually damage the tool because you have a similar situation here where your, your drill is not supported and either the margins are hitting before the center so you kind of walk inside the inside the hole, um, or your center is uh, also not uh, supported, uh, and you have a, a breakage. On uh, piloting drills, um, really you can drill to one and a half to two times the depth. And the key here, uh, when you're using a very long drill. Uh, is you want to reduce your speed and feed during entry and retract. So you've piloted um, and you want the, the long drill, you want to stop it really before the pilot um, and slow down. So you want to slow down the RPM, three or, three or 500 RPM and 20 to 40 inches per minute to within about a millimeter of the top of this uh, starter hole here. When you're down there, then increase your speed at your normal uh, cutting condition. And then when you get to the bottom of the hole, uh, especially uh, if you have a through hole, uh, you want to uh, retract. You want to slow down to three to 500 RPM. You want to retract 20 to 40 inches per minute. Um, a lot of damage can occur to the drill if you're retracting at sort of 100, 200 inches a minute uh, based, uh, and based on your rapid. You never want to rapid out. Uh, you always want to feed and feed at 20 to 40 inches per minute. The last slide here is just about drill, uh, just some troubleshooting. So uh, problem, so location of the problem, and then what to do about it. Uh, so for chipping, uh, if the problem is on the chi uh, chisel point, you wanna increase your speed and reduce your feed. If it's on the margins, you wanna check for correct runout and check stability. Rake face is um, reduced feed. So reduce your feed if you have, on this rake face, you have some chipping. Cutting edge, um, you want to uh, reduce your speed and increase feed if you have chipping. A lot of times, um, if there's chipping on the cutting edge, it's because you're recutting chips. So that's why you want to reduce your speed and increase your feed. You want to make a smaller chip uh, that would be smaller and easier to evacuate. If you have excessive Excessive wear on your chisel point, reduce the entry feed, increase your speed. If it's on the margins, reduce your speed. If it's on the rake face, uh, reduce speed. If it's on the cutting edge, uh, increase speed and increase feed. Uh, most likely, um, when you have excessive wear on your cutting edge, so right, right on that cutting edge, it can be caused from built up edge. So that's why it says increase speed, increase feed. If you have long chips, increase your feed. If you have chip packing, it always increase your feed, increase your coolant pressure. If you have drill breakage, uh, check for chip packing, uh, check stability of the workpiece. Bell mouth condition, reduce the entry feed, improve run out stability. Taper straightness issues, uh, reduce feed, improve run out, improve rigidity. Um, in addition, you can also use a double margin rather than a, a single margin if you need a little bit uh, better guidance. Uh, poor uh, surface finish, you wanna increase speed and reduce your feed. All right, thanks for joining us. Uh, don't forget to join our live training and subscribe so you get uh, reminders when we put a new video about any of the gr great horn products. Thanks and have a great day.